All right, gang, uh, I'm, I'm back again. I, if you just watched the Blenheim shrink rip, you'll note that I said that we're, I had several things coming in. And here's uh, one box of stuff. This is uh, a recent purchase, and another thing we've done uh, on a whim, which I, I may or may not regret, depending on what everybody thinks. But two older GDW titles that Apparently link together and I thought given that I have the BCS title what's that sucker's name that I haven't played yet hang on just a second while I turn my little doohickey chair around oh that's right baptism by fire yeah so uh, I thought it would be nice to have something older to compare to and in these games uh, obviously are a little simpler than BCS but these are I believe they should be unpunched I think yeah they are okay so, uh, one thing I do want to check here. Yeah, it's a John, this is a John Hill design. So this is another thing that I was uh, keen to acquire because it is a John Hill design. And he, from what I've read about his designs and some of the games that I've played, like Battle for Stalingrad and a few others, is that, um, is, that what, is that what it's called? Yeah, Battle for Stalingrad. And uh, he, you know, he tends to design games that are uh, lesson teachers so that you, you, know, you experience a game Go through, play it, and until you've worked out the lesson that's there to learn, i.e. crack the code for how to win for both sides, uh, you know, you, you can keep playing them. But once you've done that, then the, the I guess the thrill's gone. So anyway, uh, you put them on the shelf and admire them and move on to the next thing. Uh, sort of precursor to the, the, the volume the volume of SPI. We used to, to punch out games every month. So, uh, table of contents, 15 pages, etc. Some errata. Uh, nice, surprisingly nice uh, looking set of counters there, huh? Give you a little close up there if we can. Everyone likes to see panzer thingies. <laughs> so, there's some panzer thingies, there's some infantry. Uh, I'll zoom back out. Let's pop this guy out of there. Oh, it's got all the advertising material in the back too. One of my favorite things to do. Pretty, you know, old school thin counters. I mean, that's... So, you know, I, I was given the, the you know, uh, John Bannerman, Bannerman a hard time about uh, his thickness of his counters. Uh, so, in line with uh, the TSWW Europa reboot, uh, 80s style <laughs> gaming, here you go. That's that's kind of what the counters are like in his games, and here's what they they were like back in the day. So that's these are like crap. They're super thin. That's not going to be fun to play with. Anyway, this is what it is, right? You got you got to, got to love the history for what it is. Oops, someone put a little note in here. What is this? Someone paid twelve dollars and fifty seven cents for this in nineteen ninety one. Look at that. There's a receipt for it. Classic. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. We got uh, com uh, your uh, CRT with uh, results and notes on the results, and then to black and white terrain chart. That's always super handy. Gosh, you gotta love the old games, don't you? Two copies of that. Uh, more printouts. Look at the paper. Look at the old eighties, seventies, eighties style printout paper that's just classic stuff. all right good stuff let's have a look at the map and then we'll have a look at the marketing material that's in the box and this is a, a not an enormous i have to check the scale out on this guy but you can see it's pretty straightforward artwork and design big red roads big black roads uh, nice actually pretty decent sized hexes and the counters so here's the thing that's nice about these uh, this particular game is these are actually larger counters. These are not your little half-inch dudes. They're uh, I always get the sizes mixed up, so I'm not even going to say. But they're five sixteenths. Is that what it is? No, five uh, five eighths maybe. They're big. Big girl. All right. Look at that. Subscribe to challenge. I don't even know what challenge is. Dark conspiracy. Space monsters. Sands of War, Harpoon, Twilight 2000, role-playing game. Lose, lose yourself in uh, post-apocalyptic post RPG, RPG, excuse me. All right, groovy, groovy. 
uh, some mighty fortress or rather in case you need it. Uh, okay. Both games contain 17 by 22 map, 96 counters, and 24 page rule booklet, and they joined together. They were 18 and ten dollars, eighteen dollars each back in the day, and someone bought this for twelve, they got a discount. So a little errata sheet as well. Okay, let's put all that back in the box. Let's have a look at Tunis. And then I've got another box here that we'll have a look at real quick. Okay. I'm gonna take I'll leave the bloody casserine here. I don't want to bounce this around too much. Yeah, and sorry for the uh, the wobbliness. I've got the camera set up on a piece of plex with dice underneath it on top of my small end scan. Once again, 12 pages, 15 pages of rules, black and white laid out. Uh, probably going to be fine. I imagine this is going to be your standard combat systems that uh, Hill used to do. Once again, another set of counters all in punch but same same idea yes and another map at least it has consistent artwork across both <laughs> very nice all right here we go let's try and put this upside up the right way and uh there's tunis where my near where my thumb is just there and these guys all hook up obviously so very cool. Old school. Old school cool, right? I'm going to pop this all back in here as gently as I can without shaking the camera. And pull you all off to one side. And let's open this last box. And it's a box from, uh, yeah, GMT. And I, sad to say, I don't know what the hell it is. So let's have a look. I, I must have ordered something. Maybe it's just trays. It's probably just trays. In fact, it is. Well, that's boring. GMT trays. I was uh, running out. So there you have it. That was what was coming into the house. And we will talk to you soon. Ciao.